please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. I should begin by saying and wishing everyone a very happy uh, Women's Day. I mean, as the promo also indicated, we are uh, celebrating it actually all through the day. And uh, to all the lovely ladies watching out there, uh, I mean, congratulations and uh, happy Women's Day once again. Ekta, morning. Hi, hi Prashant. Well, I think it's Women's Day on Trading Hour every day, <laughs> considering that it's an all-woman team and uh, Prashant is actually a minority. Our producer is Akanksha, she's a lady. I think that, that holds as true for the Nandita. channel. <laughs> yes, but TH in specific, as is Nandita, who is our director. So we are a strong, woman-centric team and that's how it's going to be going forward. But as of now, it is equity markets which are on, so we need to talk about that as well. You're watching Trading Hour. And uh, just to give an idea in terms of what's happening for the markets, uh, we are off the day's high for the Nifty and what seems to be underperforming today is the entire mid cap index. So the mid cap index itself is down around uh, one odd percent. And if you look at it on a week to date basis, the mid cap index has lost around four and a half odd percent. Um, but we do have some important news to address now. Uh, remember that Liberty House has emerged as the top bidder for Amtech Auto, Auto and we have Sanjeev Gupta who is the chairman of Liberty House Group who joins in now. Uh, Mr. Gupta, hi, thank you very much for joining in. If you can just take us through the details, we understand that you've emerged as the successful most highest bidder right now Thank for Amtech Auto. Can you just tell us I've what... I've joined the conference. Okay, I think we've lost that line. Uh, we're going to get back to that particular conversation with Sanjeev Gupta. But Prashant, uh, I'll get to Prashant in just a bit. But let's uh, let's get in um, Sudarshan Sukhani then. I think, think Sudarshan should should be with us to talk about what's happening on the technical strategies. Sudarshan, over to you then um, for the Nifty and stocks. Yeah, good morning again. See, for the Nifty, the markets are now finding some kind of support. We have fallen into a support zone and that zone should hold for some time. So the choppiness we are seeing, yesterday we rallied, we fell again. Today we started with a gap up, we've fallen. The chances are by the time this market ends, we might again go back to a rally. So this is the choppiness that suggests that the first signs of base building or finding support are now coming in. So there is no trade in the Nifty. On the short side, you should take your profits and step aside. There is now a trade if for traders who are willing to go long, buy 10,200 call options and stay on the long side of the market. Either this will be just a false start and then we'll be proved wrong or we'll go through a decent rally. Uh -huh. And, and uh, in terms of probabilities, Sudarshan, what would you say? False uh, rally or? I would, yeah. I, I would say there's a stronger chance of a rally towards 10,400 or even higher, at least. Uh, the, the world markets are setting, it, setting themselves up for this rally and we should participate. And then you know, Prashant, the probability is only a number. Yeah, but it's all about probabilities, isn't it? What's your, uh, what, what, what are your trades, Sudarshan? Well, uh, for the day, I have long and short trades both. Tech, the techs, IT is, is doing very well. Go long in the IT stocks, wherever and whichever stock you like. But for the day, I have Infosys for a long suggestion. You could actually buy the IT index itself and then be on the side of all the IT stocks. So for the day, buy Infosys and also consider IT as a segment where you want to go long repeatedly. I have two short selling trades. One is BPCL. All the, uh, both the refinery companies are falling day after day. Something is going on there. That's a short sell. It's only intraday. And the second is M&M Financial. Financials are weak. We know the reasons why they are weak. There's a lot of problems there. But that's also an intraday trade. Do not carry short positions on uh, tomorrow. Okay, well, Sudarshan, we have a couple of uh, Twitter queries for you. In fact, the first one is a woman on <laughs> Women's Day. Swati has 1,000 shares of IDBI Bank at 82. Wants to know the way forward. Well, I think she, she should sell it off. Sell because this is all news driven. IDBI Bank goes up and comes down because of news, the basis of which no one really understands. So it's far better you exit this stock, go and enter a private sector banks. They are available at much lower prices. Buy either ICICI Bank or Axis or HDFC Bank, whichever name you like, but exit this one. Sell. Okay, uh, there's another one. Uh, Juzer has 400 shares of Tech Mahindra. He's paid uh, 335 rupees each for them. 
He wants to know uh, what to do with uh, them. He's got a time horizon of one to two years. Sudarshan? Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, he should be congratulated for buying uh, the stock mm. at a good price. And my suggestion is just hold on. In two years, you'll probably find this part at the current price has doubled itself. Do nothing with it. Stay. Hold on. Okay. All right, Sudarshan, we're going to let you go on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and taking us through all of those strategies. We have some more FNO queues lined up for you. CA Rudhamurthy joins in of Vachna Investments. Rudhamurthy, over to you then. Uh, what are you recommending stocks as well as index? See, first of all, a word on index. Last week, I was very clear to sell both Nifty as well as Bank Nifty, and we have seen a huge fall from there. Today, I'm saying having expiry, weekly expiry for Bank Nifty, I see way, way below levels from current level. The bounce, whatever you are now seeing, is a great opportunity to short Bank Nifty. For me, Bank Nifty futures looks weak, and I won't be surprised today itself if we see levels closer to 23,900 on Bank Nifty future. And when overall market was so positive today, Asian markets were up, Dow Jones, everything futures were up. We were falling like a pack of cards. Now we are having Dow Jones futures coming on the downside. So if I see any weakness in uh, European market afternoon, I won't be surprised for a big sell-off in Bank Nifty. And now after PSU banks, it is time for the private banks to sell off. ICICI, Axis, all these are already selling off. And today we are seeing Yes Bank to sell off. So I won't be surprised if this fall continues for a bigger time. So I'll be selling even Bank Nifty future for a target of 23,900 with stop loss of 24,220. Nifty also is for sell. 10,060 will be my target with a stop loss of 10,200. And I'll be also buying Bank Nifty put options. That can be 24,100 strike price put options currently available at 47.48. Look at targets of 200 rupees for today only. And I'll be keeping a 10 rupee stop loss from current level. And I'll also be selling HDFC Bank. This bank has been the loan bank which has been supporting Bank Nifty for a while. And it has broken yesterday its crucial support. So HDFC Bank for me looks the weakest. Just 10 rupees stop loss from current level, I'm keeping at 1,850. And I am looking at targets of 1,760 on HDFC Bank. These banks slowly will come out. The cockroaches are coming one by one out. Yes, Bank for me is a clear sell. So one bank, if I have to pick up right now at current price and sell it heavily, I'll be selling Yes Bank. Yes Bank in futures can be sold for a target of 280 and have a stop loss of 305 for the sell call. And I have a last sell call again on Axis Bank. Again, sell Axis Bank futures for a target of 496 with a stop loss of 516. All right, uh, Rudhamurthy, thank you very much. Appreciate you joining in uh, with those trades. We'll speak with you soon again. Sanjeev Gupta, Chairman, Liberty House Group, is now uh, back with us on the line. Uh, Sanjeev, thanks very much. Good morning. Uh, you've emerged as H1 for uh, Amtec uh, assets. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? I mean, uh, where does it go from here? What's the haircut? Have you been asked to uh, sort of, you know, come up with a revival plan? Or where does it stand as of now? So we have been chosen as the, the H1 preferred bidder, which means we now have to basically complete the transaction. We have been chosen as the chosen company to buy that business. Uh, our resolution plan has been accepted. And we need to now go through the formalities of completing that position. Uh, Mr. Gupta, can you just share with us the details of the transaction or what it might entail in terms of, say, taking over debt and what kind of equity value would you see in the company? So those details will become, uh, will be disclosed once the acquisition actually completes. They're still, still confidential. Broadly, uh, could you talk to us? I mean, in the ballpark, what's the kind of haircut, etc., that banks are taking uh, on this? Well, some of that information is there in the public domain, and we are bound by uh, agreements not to talk about them specifically. Could you tell us how much debt will uh, you take on? No, it's all cash debt. There's no debt. And what's the turnaround plan for the company? I mean, at least uh, the broad outlines uh, for it. Yeah, I mean, the business is a good business. It's uh, one of the leading uh, automobile component businesses. We have already the, the leading auto component business in the UK, which actually mm -hmm. includes some of this uh, Ampex uh, uh, units which we acquired uh, through the UK administration process. Okay. It so combines very well with our business. We have a clear plan on how to revive this business uh, and how to 
both increase uh, in efficiency and increase volumes. So that it, as soon as we complete the process, we'll implement those plans. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gupta, I just wanted to actually touch upon the fact with regards to the UK assets which you had taken over of Amtech. Can you just tell us how exactly that is performing at this point and what exactly was the turnaround plan that was implemented there? They are performing extremely well. The turnaround plan there was actually reasonably simple. It, it, was, it, it, it uh, required engagement with the OEMs where we are already the largest uh, OEM supplier in the UK so we had already an existing great relationship with them so in partnership with them we made certain further investments certain uh, changes to the business and uh, we got the business on uh, on a pace which now is performing extremely well okay this would mark your entry so, into India in the auto component segment it will mark our entry into India full stop. This is our first big step into India. We're all very excited about it. Okay. Can you tell us uh, uh, what kind of prospects do you see for the auto component business in India specifically and what are the synergies that we could see between, say, Amtech Auto UK as well as your India business? I'm sure there might be some cost savings that you're considering already. Yes. So India is one of the, one of the uh, most prospective markets for auto. Uh, it's uh, it's expected to become it's expected to grow rapidly and it's expected to become a key market uh, uh, for the sector. So we have been eyeing this for some time. There is great synergy between India and UK and other parts of our uh, portfolio. There is a lot of products which can be made uh, in various uh, jurisdictions in cross supply and technology transfers and platform transfers. So there's a lot of uh, cross fertilization. And also, of course, there is a great deal of uh, synergy with our uh, upstream businesses in steel and aluminium same as what we're implementing in other parts of the world. Right. Uh, Sanjeev, I'm going to circle back to uh, what I began uh, by asking you, which is essentially, if you could give us some outline of the bid itself. I mean, what is the structure? You said it's an all cash. You don't assume any debt. Uh, I mean, is, you, you, you know, is the, is the payment, deferred payment over a number of years? I mean, just some outline of what the bid is lo going to look like. I mean, has looked like. There is no, there is no deferred. There is no there is no deferred payment. Quantum and details I can't go into, but there's no deferred payment and there is no debt being taken. Uh, okay, okay. I want to ask, uh, now turn to Bhushan Power. Uh, you made the bid after the deadline uh, ended, right? Uh, banks rejected it, you went to NCLT. What is the status now? I think the hearing, next hearing is tomorrow. That uh -huh. is the status, the court needs to decide. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and what is your uh, primary uh, sort of argument going to be? Uh, because uh, you, you're essentially saying you're the highest bidder. Our argument is that we are yeah, well, making a bid which we believe is a superior bid. And in the interest of all stakeholders, creditors and employees, it mm. should be considered. That is a uh, basic, basic argument. Mm. Uh, you know, there was, uh, we understand that the confusion arose because there was some, uh, you know, and this is this we understand from uh, people in the process that there was some confusion about the deadlines for the Bhushan steel bid and the Bhushan power bid. Is that what happened? Just to understand the background to this, there is a lot of confusion uh, in many of these processes. I mean, I don't blame anybody for that because it's the first time mm. India is going through this it's historic. Uh, event so there has obviously been uh, there obviously will be some degree of confusion. We got caught up in that also. We were also of course as you may know originally made for pollution power pollution steel as well. In the end we chose uh, uh, to focus on motion power but we got caught up in uh, in some other confusion. Uh -huh. And what is your understanding as far as Amtech is concerned? I mean uh, how much uh, haircut uh, are banks having to take? Because you say that your bid is going to be superior. So you have you have some idea? Sorry, I'm saying that we you have made the highest bid. We have made the highest bid, and we've been accepted. We've been accepted as the highest. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. That's oh, sure, sure. Sure. Oh, okay, Mr. Gupta. Just before we let you go, I just wanted a quick comment with regards to the subsidies that Amtech has uh, currently. I think Castex and Metalist Forging. Uh, any plans for that? Yes, they are synergetic businesses, and. Uh, it's just how they were structured previously, but they all work together. So, yes, we will be uh, targeting those as well. Okay. Uh, uh, any other assets you're looking at, uh, Sanjeev? 
Uh, I mean, apart from these two, Amtec, you're already H1. Uh, the think, other one, yeah. I think it's really, yeah. I think it's really well known. The three assets we, we chose to focus on what was uh, Putin Power and Steel. Uh, there was Amtec, and third was uh, ABC Shipping. So those are the three we focused on in the first round. Second round, we have some targets also, but that's still early days. Can't divulge uh, any names, right? You can point. divulge the sectors that you might be interested no, in. because they have not yet. Sorry? You can divulge the other sectors that you might be interested in in the Indian market? Sectors, see, sectors-wise, as far as what the Indian sales process is, these are the sectors, actually. But it, beyond that, we are interested in financial services. Uh, we are interested in construction. We are interested, interested in further uh, engineering, aerospace units. So all the sectors, steel, aluminium, auto, air fans, um, no, energy, renewable energy, which we have in several processes of North Korea. And would it primarily be an inorganic route uh, that you're adopting to enter these sectors that you're interest in, interested in? Not not only inorganic, although there's a good opportunity at the moment with this time happening in India to focus on inorganic, but we are, we are globally a mixture of both organic and inorganic. Often we take a base, an inorganic base, and then we'll grow it, we'll bolt on things to it. Um, so it depends on the specific situation. But it will be a combination of the two. All right, Sanjeev. Thanks very much. We'll leave it there. Appreciate you join us, uh, joining us today uh, with uh, the, I mean, not very much uh, detail with regards to the bid itself. Uh, I think that's where most of the interest is going to be. I mean, the haircut, what's uh, the offer, uh, and specifics of the turnaround plan would be what uh, the shareholders would be interested to know. But... Uh, and of course, uh, the entity hears the appeal with regards to their bid for Bhushan power tomorrow, as Sanjeev pointed out. So we'll keep track of that as well. Absolutely consolidatory for the bank nifty at this point. But maybe the PSU banking space should come up for you because uh, that is continuing to underperform. That is the nifty PSU bank space. The last time I checked, it was down around half odd percent or thereabout. So our, it has recovered from the day's low. So that too has flattened out. But just uh, keep an eye on a couple of these stocks within the nifty space. Indusind Bank down. 1.2 percent yes bank which is uh, correcting a fair bit and uh, a couple of others um, i say as a bank seems to be clawing back today that stock is up around a percent and a half in fact staying with the financial space uh, the power minister has said that state bank of india is worried about its exposure to the mundra power projects of both adani power as well as tata power he went on to express concerns over stressed assets in the power sector as a whole we spoke to the deputy md of sbi mr sunil Srivastav, who also acknowledged that the entire banking system is facing problems when it comes to the power space. There is a stress sector for the banking system as such, not only State Bank of India. There are quite a few power plants which are yet in the process of implementation, but post-February 12th circular of the Reserve Bank of India, there will be very little leeway for the banks except to recognize them as NPAs and to find a resolution plan within the next 180 days, which ends in August or perhaps in September, as the case may be. Mm. But during that period, to resolve all the issues in the power sector, mm. where the, uh, there is, on the one hand, uh, uh, we are told that there is excess uh, supply and therefore we do not need power. Mm. And on the other hand, we see the daily prices in the uh, energy exchanges mm. uh, where power is being traded, uh, creeping up higher and higher. So there is obviously a problem related to distribution and there is obviously a problem related to discom's health. Now these all issues have to be addressed in a very comprehensive manner and uh, addressing these issues in a short possible time of six months is going to be very, very difficult. Okay, uh, that is State Bank of India on uh, the power sector. 20 points on the Nifty, 10,174 is where we are at. Uh, so Indigo seems to have recovered a little bit as the, the stock at the bottom of the screen indicates. JSPL has come up a little bit back at about 229, 230 odd rupees. Uh, but otherwise, I don't see uh, very much else.